Moving to the next stage of the procedure, once you have the paediatric bronchoscope into the patient's airway, you're ventilating, patient is stable, foreign body is visualised. The next step is to load the telescope onto the optical forceps. Unlock the bridge and remove the telescope. Now a common mistake or a common problem that occurs when the, when the surgeon is removing the telescope is to flex it like that. You've got to point this out to, to the customers when you do your training to be very careful and to let the scrub nurse or the sister know that if they see the surgeon bending the telescope like that, they should feel empowered to say, watch the telescope, stop. Because the fact of the matter is, if they pop this telescope and break it during the procedure, there is a good chance there won't be a spare and that is going to leave them in, in difficulty to remove the foreign body. So we're moving on and we're going to put that telescope onto the optical forceps. I'll just put that down for now. And these are the optical forceps. Moving on to optical forceps, this is one of the reasons that we go with the longest telescope because you will maintain compatibility for introducing the rigid bronchoscope tubes but then you have the simple choice to make as far as optical forceps is concerned. If you have the 30 centimetre telescope, which you use to introduce the 30 centimetre bronchoscope tube, you then need the longer telescope to go with the forceps, because obviously the forceps have to stick out at the end of the bronchoscope tube in order to retrieve any foreign body. The longer forceps work perfectly well with the 30 centimetre bronchoscopes, that was what they were designed for, but then of course they will also work with the 26 centimetre bronchoscope tubes. The only consideration that you must remember, and this could be an exam question for you, is the rigid optical forceps will not fit down a rigid bronchoscope tube which is size 3.5 or less. The sizes of the bronchoscope tubes are all written on here. Size 4, 3.5, 3, all the way back up to size 6. That's an arbitrary scale which did used to relate directly to the sizing mechanism for the endotracheal tubes. That is actually outdated now and endotracheal tubes are simply measured in uh, millimetres. So we now have the inner diameter of the bronch tube and the outer diameter so that pe people can make a simple choice about the size of bronchoscope tube that they use. So we go back to the optical forceps and we have this particular optical forcep. This is what's called a peanut grasping forcep. It has the cup jaws which will grab a hard foreign body or indeed a peanut. A peanut is something that is commonly inhaled by children aged usually between 6 and 10. We then also have a coin forcep. The coin for forcep is different because you can see where the forceps actually hinge. It doesn't come together and then we have these very fine teeth at the tip of the forcep which will grab the outer rim of any coin and that relates to international currency as well as our own. These two are the main standard forceps. We then have the smaller grasping forceps. They are a cup style forcep. This is commonly referred to as a universal forcep. It's a cup forcep, but it's also toothed so that it will grab a hard or soft foreign body. The most common ones that we tend to recommend are the peanut forceps, so-called peanut forceps, and the coin forceps. So quite simply, we take the telescope and we load it onto the forcep. That has a locking mechanism as such. And then we take the bronchoscope tube. The surgeon has to have removed the bridge from the bronchoscope tube. You would then, you've then got to consider that you have ventilation, anaesthetic uh, air oxygen mixture and anaesthetic gases going down here. So while that forcep is being loaded, this area should be covered up. Commonly, in experienced hands, the surgeon will just put their thumb over the end of here. But generally, we recommend just to pop the 
glass window plug on there, that give, remains then an airtight seal for proper ventilation and you don't end up anesthetizing the surgeon. So the next part of the operation or the procedure is simply to remove that foreign body. So to do that we would take the glass window plug off, we would then probably put the instrument guide on but if a surgeon's confident they may go straight in. The beauty of the instrument guide is that a hole in a rubber seal which means when you pass the forceps through that hole again you have a, a relatively airtight system. So imagining that that bronchoscope tube is still in the patient you then take the optical forceps pass them down here and quite simply grab the foreign body pull it back and then ultimately you are going to have to remove the whole system so the surgeon must communicate with the anaesthetist to say that he's coming out now because you are taking the breathing tube for that patient out so the anaesthetist has to be ready to re-intubate that patient so essentially you just remove that whole system. Okay one thing we didn't touch on in the other uh, videos were these 18 centimeter rigid bronchoscopes. Now as you can imagine these are for use on little babies and they are routinely used within a children's hospital setting where the expertise exists to to deal with those conditions uh, of, of babies but your local DGH that does have an accident and emergency department may want to have these on the set because you can't always rely on the ambulance taking a baby to the local children's hospital. So if that baby comes through the doors at, the, at your local DGH then that hospital does have to deal with, with what's going on. So if it is one of these uh, situations where there is an airway problem, there is a, potentially a foreign body or an undiagnosed condition, the, depending on the, on the ENT department there, they may or may not want these on the set. So the, if in the non-children's hospital setting, if they have these on the set, what they are going to do is introduce that into the patient to get that patient stable using the same technique as we did before with the 26 or the 30 centimeter bronchoscope tubes. Potentially with the telescope, some places not due to the economic pressures, but essentially all they are going to do is introduce that bronchoscope tube in order to get that patient stabilized and then what usually happens is there will be a re so-called retrieval team that will have been uh, called at the, at, the local, at the nearest children's hospital and they will come out and they will take that baby into the children's hospital setting where they are fully equipped to deal with, with, that, with that tiny patient. So that's why I tend not to cover these uh, particular bronchoscope tubes along with the others because it's much more specialised but also what we usually do and, or suggest to people building up these sets is to have the small diameter in the shortest uh, bronchoscope, or the, sorry, the middle length bronchoscope tube. Um, if you have the smallest diameter which is a, a size 3 of this particular one you can normally get that into any patient, be they a baby or a young child, and therefore that patient is then stabilised and can be moved.